Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha, welcome to Condo Insider. I'm here with my co-host, Jane Sugimura, prominent local attorney. We're gonna talk about association matters, and particularly this week, we're on the final hours of Bill 69, the residential fire sprinkler bill for non-sprinkler building, going before the final vote of the city council next Wednesday, April 25th. So we want to talk about, we've got an insight what's going to happen, but first, welcome to the show, Jane, and I know HCCA, Hawaii Council of Community Associations, helps sponsor this show to help educate board members and owners. Yes, and uh, and this is one of the things we do, you know, we, 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 do, we advocate for the uh, rights and benefits of people who live in Kano's, and we try to educate uh, owners and board members and people who uh, are involved in the industry relating to a management and operation of these buildings. And if you check our web website at Hawaii Council of, of Community Associations, you will see for new board members, we have a seminar coming up in May. It's a half-day seminar on what it's like to be a new board member and what your responsibilities are. Then later in the month, we have another routine lunch seminar on an interesting topic as well. So uh, check out Hawaii Council of Community Associations. For a owner, it's only $10 a year to belong, and there's a lot of very useful education for all of you. But let's get right to the topic topic at hand, okay. the famous Bill 69 that's been all over the press, statements by the mayor, fire safety, you know, it's my understanding next week it's up for a vote. Yes. Uh, the city council meets on Wednesday and, uh, and it's up for third reading, approval, uh, and it'll be approval of a floor draft because uh, there was a committee meeting uh, about a week ago and uh, the fire department and some condo owners who showed up and HCCA, we all had comments on, 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 on the existing bill. And so those comments were incorporated and they are now you know, uh, being presented as a floor draft to Bill 69. And that's what's up for approval. And even as we speak, uh, there are some issues that are, are kind of unresolved as, you know, uh, I've been working with uh, city council members in, in drafting language, you know, f to incorporate the changes that were discussed at the last committee meeting. Uh, it turns out that, uh, that um, dormitories and some uh, apartment buildings might not be part of this bill, so we might have to carve them out because uh, you know, they, they weren't included in the discussion. So for those who don't know, it's a floor draft. Where does it go from here? Floor draft means that the, 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 the floor draft will be on the web, city website so that if anybody who is interested in seeing what the final version looks like, they can go on to the city uh, website for city council and for uh, how to participate in hearings and go to the city council uh, meeting for Wednesday the 25th and they will they think they can see all the bills uh, that are going to be uh, considered on that day. So when does it become an ordinance? After assuming it passes out uh, and this is third reading it's got to go through three readings assuming it passes the council vote on Wednesday it will go to the mayor and I'm sure the mayor will sign it. He's been anxious to sign some kind of legislation dealing with so If the with mayor this. signs it, then it's an ordinance. It's an ordinance, It's yes. not gonna be more public hearings or anything else. This is kind of the end of the road. This is the end of the road, although it's contemplated that, you know, there might be some changes later, but minor changes. I, I think, you know, uh, the parties, the, the uh, stakeholders are pretty much uh, okay with the language that's going to go into the floor draft. And so the changes in the future would be an amendment right. in a future bill, I guess, uh, to address that issue if right. there are any. So do you expect the city council to pass this? Yes. you expect the mayor to sign it? Yes. I, I really do, because he's, he's been asking. I, if this is not the bill he introduced. But I'm, I, I'm, I'm sure, you know, based on uh, the public support for this version of the bill and the council support, uh, and you know, it's, it's not so much the council support, it's the council who, will, who, who made it very obvious at the last city council hearing. There were, uh, there's what, there's nine guys, there's nine people 
on the uh, city council. And four of the uh, nine uh, made speeches said that they would not support a mandate that required sprinklers in high-rise buildings. And everybody else voted yes with reservations. And so it was really clear that uh, there was not strong support for mandatory uh, require, you know, requirement for sprinklers in high-rise buildings. Before I ask you about that, but I just would like to make a comment. You know, uh, our government officials, elected officials, take a lot of heat. Yeah. But what, this is a perfect textbook example of a proposal that the city council members listen to all the parties, all the potential participants in this bill. They spend a lot of time in discussion with people. The system voted from an emotional point of view. I think they did a lot of due diligence on this bill to try to find a way to address fire safety, but at the same time address the concerns of the community. So they deserve some credit for the effort they put into this. Right, you know, and there were three council members who, whose districts had the most condos, and that was council member Kara Fukunaga, council member Ann Kobayashi, and council member Trevor, Trevor Ozawa. And they had, these community meetings, they had two community meetings, one in uh, uh, October and one the week before Christmas. And the one that was held the week before Christmas went on for two hours. The council committee room was packed, the hallways were packed, and Trevor, council member Trevor Ozawa at the second city council hearing when, he, when he, he made a speech, and he, he said, you know, when the mayor introduced Bill 69, mandating fire sprinkler systems in all high-rise buildings, he was 100% in support of that. And because of these two public hearings where he listened to, for, to condo you know, owners and residents for hours, hours he listened to them, he changed his mind. And he said he would in no way support a mandate for the reasons that he heard that you know, people moved into these buildings, they knew they weren't sprinklers, uh, and that since the Marco Polo fire, they've been taking steps to make their buildings safer, and, and they, there was a lot of support for the life safety evaluation that is being included in this, you know, in this uh, uh, ordinance change. And you know, so you know, he, he, he supports the bill, but he doesn't, he no longer supported mandatory retrofitting, and to me, this is a textbook case on if you if something bothers you you got to speak up and you got to talk to your elected officials because you have to educate them and here's an example of somebody you know who was 100% for mandatory retrofitting who changed his mind after he heard the people speak so get involved out there in the community both at the state legislature and the city council because you are heard and it's an important part of adop adopting and establishing good legislation and good ordinances for our industry. But let's talk about what we think Bill 69 is going to be. Okay. First of all, who does it apply to? It applies to high, all high-rise uh, buildings over 75 feet and residential buildings, and it, it, it applies to condos and co-ops. And in this the last few days, it's questionable as to whether it applies to dormitory, towers and rental apartment buildings because they you know those two types of buildings were not addressed by the fire safety advisory committee so um, I don't know if they're going to be included. I know there's some discussion, some concerns were raised by the Office of Council Services uh, regarding those two types of buildings. Well it's interesting because I would assume that the people who live in residential apartment buildings or low-income housing have the same fire risks anyone else does if they don't have a fire sprinkler system. Right. But the problem is is that they weren't represented in the you know, committee hearings. And so we don't know what their situation is and, and, um, and we, we can't presume to, you know, uh, say that you know this bill is going to be good or bad for them. So there could be an amendment in the future to include them or not include them. We just right. don't know. Yes. Okay. So you say 75 feet. That means a building as low as six stories could be subject to this bill, depending on their height and yes. The, yes. the topography of the land and right. those types of things. So not just condos. 
However, we don't know about rental buildings and we don't know about dormitories at the moment. Right. So what do they have to do in this bill? We talk about this fire life safety inspection. What does that mean and what's that mean they have to do? Okay, what the life safety evaluation is, and it, what it is, it's a standardized, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a standard that's been established and it's in the ordinance. That's part of this new uh, bill. And what it does is it looks at uh, 17 items that affect the safety of a building, like how tall your building is, you know, how and, and, and what is it made of? Is it made of concrete? Are the walls concrete or are they, you know, um, uh, drywall? And it all, it depends on whether you have stand pipes in your stairwells, how well your stair, uh, stairwells are, are they lit or not? Do you have emergency lighting? What about your fire alarm systems? You know, are they the old systems? Have they been upgraded? Uh, smoke detectors? I mean, and, and, and the, uh, there's this, what we call a matrix. And this is a spreadsheet that basically has all of the values, all of the items that are being evaluated, plus the values that are being assigned to to this particular item. And so people can go, it's on the website, at this uh, fire department website, and it's on the city council website because it's embedded in part of the ordinance, and it's on the Hawaii council website, the matrix. And so people want to see what items uh, you know, are gonna be looked at or considered to see if the building is safe. They can go and, and take a look at the matrix and see the items and they can go and start looking at their own buildings to see if they've got fire rated doors, uh, to look for vertical openings, to make sure that they've got a standpipe in every stairwell. And, you know, and because the Marco Polo didn't have a standpipe in every stairwell. But the short summary would be is that in this ordinance, specifically is a fire life safety matrix. So it's not variable. It's a specific form that has to be completed by a design professional. We'll come back to that yeah. in a minute. And once the ordinance is assigned by the mayor, it must be done within three years. Right. And from that moment, you will know whether you pass or fail and what you may or may not have to do. Right. And we're gonna come back to that and keep that thought going. We're gonna take a break for one minute and come back to Bill 69 shortly. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Gabrielli. I'm the host for Young Talents Making Way here on FinTech Hawaii. We talk every Tuesday at 11 a.m. about things that matters to tech, matter to science, to the people of Hawaii with some extraordinary guests, the students of our schools who are participating in science fair. So Young Talents Making Way every Tuesday at 11 a.m. only on FinTech Hawaii. Mahalo. This guy looked familiar. He calls himself the Ultra Fan, but that doesn't explain all this. Why? Why? He planned this party, planned the snacks, he even planned to coordinate colored shirts, but he didn't plan to have a good time. Go, 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 go. Now you wouldn't do this in your own house, so don't do it in your team's house. Know your limits and plan ahead so that everyone can have a good time. Welcome back. We're talking about Bill 69, the final, final version of, of the fire sprinkler mandates proposed by the mayor. There's been a lot of progress by owners, condos, fire department to come up with an opportunity to make our building safer. So we talked about the life fire safety matrix, which is in the ordinance. And it has to be done within three years of the ordinance becoming law. Right. And it's got to be done by a design professional. And that's an architect or an engineer? Certainly not a condominium management company. No. No, it's got to be a licensed yeah, ar ar architect or an engineer. And they will be trained by the city and they will be getting the software. They, they will be able to download from the city website the software uh, for them to go into the buildings and do their evaluations so that the buildings only pay for the professional time. They're not paying for any software because the software belongs to the city. The city is giving it to them for free. 
And the board can't do it. No. And if we had an engineer on the board, probably not a good idea to have a person with a conflict of interest to inform. Right, form. right, no. It, it's got to be, you know, somebody who doesn't have, you know, a conflict. So the one thing that I noticed when I was looking at the matrix is that I think you said there's 19 areas. Uh, 17. They, 17 areas you look at. I would just summarize that for our audience here that first of all, it has to do with alarm systems. Right. Because alarm systems, if they're old, they're not going to meet the current code, and which requires basically an enunciator in every bedroom and, and those types of things. So you wouldn't get as many points for that, right. even though you have an alarm system. Then old fire doors don't have the same fire resistance as new fire doors. Right. You have potential holes in the floor where pipes have come through, and they usually put a fire stop around the remaining part where the pipe is and the floor don't meet right. to prevent fire from going through that. But probably the two most important things are what we call compartmentalization where what separates one apartment from another apartment? Mm -hmm. Is it just studs and drywall, which wouldn't be much safety, or is it a concrete, concrete block, right. which is much safer and prevents fire? Right. And then the most, in the, in, and the big dog in the room is gonna be what I call the location of the hallways. Are the hallways and corridors in the inside of the building or on the exterior edge of the building? Right. And those are the types of things that are evaluated, but I would just say to our audience, this is a great opportunity for boards to look at fire safety on a general basis, looking out for their homeowners and what they can do to make things better. So, once this bill gets signed, my belief is that all, the, all these uh, affected associations, 75 feet, no sprinklers, have to file some kind of notice. What is that about? It's a notice, that, that is the statute says that they have to file within 180 days of adoption. That, mean, that means from the time the mayor signs it into law, that they have 180 days or six months to, uh, and I, I'm sure they're gonna have forms that you can just sign and submit to the city saying that you will comply with the law. So they're mandating everybody acknowledge this new ordinance and stating you will come and, and send in the form within 180 days right. that you will comply with the ordinance. Within three years. Within right. three years. Which means that you have to uh, initiate, you know, make an appointment with a licensed professional. And, you know, it's going to take them a couple of months to be trained and they're going to be given the, them, I mean, the fire department is doing the training. So they will be training the, uh, the licensed professionals and giving them the software. And then when, when, when that's done, then the associations or uh, the building managers can start calling and making appointments and having them come in and do the inspection. But the management companies I've spoken with, and I'm familiar with one pretty intimately, they're already reaching out to architects and engineers saying, are you going to be able to offer this service and will you be prepared to immediately give us your proposal and maybe a variable on an hourly basis and maybe in a flat fee based on number of floors? I don't know, but I know the management companies in anticipation of this are already looking for resources for boards to comply with the, the ordinance because in essence within 180 days you have to say I'm going to comply, but within three years you have to do the matrix. Yeah, you have to do the evaluation, have somebody come in and do the evaluation. Walk around your building and just check off and, and give you a score on, on those different items that are on the, uh, on the matrix. And like I said, this matrix is, is already public you know, information. It's on the fire department website, it's on the city council website, it's on our website. So it's not like, and, and people are already looking at it. But you know that because they come and they testify and they said, oh, you know, you should change this, this score to this and this score to this. And we looked at all the different numbers and this looks like a typo. So you know they're looking at it. You know, so, so I, I'm glad to hear that they are looking at it. They're looking at the matrix and, and walking around their building and trying to find out, you know, you know, where they're deficient and, you know, start fixing up and doing the repairs because that's a lot cheaper than doing sprinklers. Well, I know the big argument for the city council from a lot of condo associations would be summed up as, we can't afford it. And, you know, all buildings are kind of different. They need pump rooms and there's all sorts of issues with regard to sprinklers. So if they fail, are they going to be forced to put a sprinkler system in or are there chances well, no, for them? Once you go through, you know, the, the evaluation, you're going to get a score. And you're going to get a printout. 
And so you can see where you're deficient. And so if you got a low score because you, you had a lot, a lot of vertical openings, you go out and you fix those vertical openings. Or, you know, you, you, fix, you replace all your doors and you put fire, you know, uh, rated doors on. And, you know, for, and, and if you still don't get a passing score, because you can do the, you know, the evaluation multiple times, if you still don't get a passing score, you can opt out. What does that mean? That means that at a, 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 a regular meeting of the association, or if you're a co-op, your annual meeting, or a special meeting, uh, the owners or the shareholders in a, in a co-op can vote, and more than 50% can vote to opt out of this requirement. I, I read that provision, so I kind of sum this up as that once you've gone through, you have to go through the life safety, right. fire safety evaluation and you can have an additional three years to get a passing score by going and correcting things you've discovered. Right. However, at the end, if it still mandates fire sprinklers, if a majority, 50.1% of the owners at a meeting, either special or annual, vote to opt out, then they would be exempt from putting in the fire sprinklers. Right. However, they need, still need to get a passing score. They still need to get a passing score on the rest of the items yes. that are on the, on, on, on the committee. Yes. On the, on the matrix form. Right. So it's, it's something that's it's, it's very important. So if they decide to opt out, I think there are two additional conditions that then occur. Yes, they have to put a sign in a conspicuous place in the building saying that they don't have sprinklers. And, uh, you know, they, there are these real estate forms that you provide to prospective buyers who want to, you know, who are interested in buying units in the building. And so those real estate forms will ha now have uh, an item where you have to disclose that there are no sprinklers in the building. Yeah, I know that's called the RO105C, the Managing Agents Disclosure. So I see the Hawaii Association of Realtors amending that form to have some kind of checkbox. We have sprinklers, don't have sprinklers, right. or whatever the status may be. But then in a conspicuous public place, which is typically the lobby, you need to have a sign saying this is a non-sprinkler building to some effect. Yes. Now, we've talked about that, and they can opt out. So condos can opt out to avoid this cost. And co-ops. And co-ops, too. But then... They still have to do the life safety inspection, and then the board would have an opportunity to see what the cost of sprinklers are, so that the owners were making an informed decision whether they wanted to have sprinklers or not have sprinklers. Right. But are there other exceptions where you don't have to put sprinklers in? If you are a high-rise building, and it doesn't make any difference how high you are, but if you have exterior quarters where when you walk out of your unit and it's, you're out in the open, you know, you're exposed to the air, and you don't have a wall there. Those types of buildings are exempt from the fire sprinkler requirements. And if you are a high-rise building under 10 stories, so if you're nine stories or below, you are exempt. You don't have to put in the fire sprinklers. You so still have to pass the, fi you know, the, the, fire, the life, safety, right. fire safety life evaluation. So primarily the sprinkler side is for 10 stories or higher. Right. And they are, don't apply if you have exterior corridors with those corridors giving you access to an exit stairway. Right. And so, uh, but there can't be any interior corridors. Right. How about balconies? You know, we talk about lanai's. Uh, They're uh, also exempt from sprinklers. Yeah, I think the key words are, and I don't know of any case where it's not true, where at least 50% of the long side of the lanai is open, then the lanai itself doesn't have to have sprinklers. And I think that's also true with respect to elevator rooms, elevator hoistways, and mechanical rooms, which has its own um, separate fire suppression systems, right. not normally sprinkler systems. So right. th there are some exceptions. And I would say that you know the Hawaii Council is going to hold a seminar on new laws coming up here in the, in the next month or so, and this will be repeated again. So those who want more information, please come to our seminar and learn on more May twenty fourth. May twenty fourth. Right, May twenty fourth. I'm glad you remember the date. Cause I don't remember the date. Okay. When's, the, when's the board new board training? Twelfth. The twelfth. May twelfth. Go online, sign up. It's a great program, and uh, you know we see things in our legislature every year, new bills, because they feel. Um, the kind of owners or kind of board members aren't educated, so we're doing our best to, to help change that. 
So let me ask you this. Let's just say things aren't quite right. They're, they're too slow getting the bids. Are there mechanisms within the ordinance without going through them for extensions and for appeals to the fire life safety yes. matrix? And yes, you, you can uh, appeal uh, the, uh, the findings of the professional, uh, and you can do that, but you, you make the appeal through the fire department. And we've been assured, you know, by the fire chief that, um, you know, that, you know, they will take into consideration all, all of the, the factors that are, you know, presented to them and try to come up with a fair, you know, fair uh, decision. But that's who you do. You, the, the appeals are made to the fire department. Well, we're at the end of our show, so I'd like to just say in summary, first of all, thank you, Jane, for being here. I love being a co-host with you. I keep begging <laughs> you to fire me, but you won't do it. So we'll get through that someday. But I do want to thank the city council, the fire department, all the volunteers, the various people interested in this bill, from architects, to engineers, to condo owners. We're working through this process because if you take an objective look at this bill, it's a fair and balanced way to improve fire and life safety for our residents, but at the same time recognizing the hardship certain uh, requirements, requirements may put on our condo owners. So we thank them for that, and we thank all of you for watching Condo Insider, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Aloha.